welcome to civilera.com today we will discuss about anchorage length of free bars so i have a blog on anchorage length on my blog civilera.com but then many students have been asking me for explaining this over a video a bit so uh, what do you mean by anchorage length of free bars especially for beams i'm going to discuss this today now before this what do you mean by design of a beam design of any member for that matter involves ensuring that the beam can resist the forces let it be moments or shear or torsion or whatever so that's one thing that you have to do now even if you do that there is a possibility that your rebars are going to come out of it because it's going to bend it's going to sag and it hooks so here there is a tension developed and that tension can pull out your bars so to ensure that it doesn't fail in that bond we ensure that there is sufficient anchorage so it's like as i men mentioned here consider a blanket which is fully stretched and held tight by a person at each end and then assume that you put a load on the blanket and if one of the guy release his hand what happens the blanket will come out of his hand and that's a failure of the purpose you cannot hold that stone there on the blanket so the same way the beam when it sags and when it pulls the rebar due to tension at the ends at the support if it comes out if the top bars comes out it is a failure it's a failure in bond so this is what we are trying to avoid by having proper anchorage so now what is the proper anchorage that you need now many by heart this 50 times diameter of the bar that's not really right to by heart it like that because it depends on the grade of concrete and also on the grade of rebars it's okay to by heart it once you know this once you know that it varies with the grade of concrete and steel yeah so here is a quick formula as per is for 56 close 26.2.2 so you can refer that close and here is the formula that the code tells you now here you need to understand that sigma s means your 0.87 fi because that is the factor of safety for materials 0.87 1 by 1.15 the material factor of safety so if you say your grade of steel is 415 you are required to reduce it as a factor of safety and that's what you do and then 4 is a constant and tau bd is what you get from this table now when you say get from this table it varies the bond stress varies based on the grade of concrete and also on what kind of rebar you are using so this is for plain rebars which we never use you can see here in the title it's for plain rebars and plain rebars we aren't using at all in sites right now so it's all deformed bars so you have to increase whatever values you have here by 60 percent so that's also written in the code so please read the code carefully it's all mentioned in this blog as well so i have increased the bond stress and then you get it as 50 times diameter if it is m20 concrete and if your grade of steel is 415 now if your grade of concrete is more if it is m25 your bond stress is more and your length requirement may be lesser but since your sigma s is in numerator you can appreciate that if the steel grade increases your requirement for development length also increases yeah so it is not always true to say 50 times diameter so you can calculate as per this now next point that i want you to remember is many times your column sizes are so large say an example shear wall then you may not need that bend down of the rebar it can be a straight rebar it necessarily need not be a bent bar it can be a straight bar provided you have that development length what you calculate here as per the requirement available as a straight length so if you have a straight length satisfying your development length that's it you need not bend the rebars down but 
many times in medium sized buildings your column sizes are say 200 by 450 300 by 600 that range in which case you will have to bend your ray bars and when you bend your ray bars then only you can achieve your development length the required development length now one more point when you bend down because of the bend you get a bit more anchorage because of that reason the total length can be reduced yeah so the calculation and an example i have mentioned here the code says that maximum you can take 16 times diameter as the benefit from the bend it's as simple as this see assume a bucket in which you have put say sand and you are putting a rod inside that and pulling it out now when you have a bend in the road at the end it will be more difficult to pull it out simply because it has more anchorage because of the bend the same thing you have more bond when you have a bend so code allows you to have four times diameter as the anchorage value for a 45 degree bend now here in beams you generally have 90 degree bend so you can take it eight times diameter as the benefit for having the bend which means a bend increases the anchorage that you have by eight times which means the required can be reduced by eight times so if you have thousand millimeter requirement it will be lesser than that so all that i have mentioned here in the blog so you can read and understand that it should be self-explanatory i have taken care to explain it in the blog very carefully now many times if your beams are shallower and if you are not achieving it because of the construction sequence you generally would want to have your concreting done up to the bottom of the beam and when you do that you may have to leave a double bars from the columns now leaving a double bars from the column for the beams is a bit not so great so if you want to avoid that you can use a u-bar and this particular detail is generally used in middle east and so that will ensure that you have the anchorage and you also don't have to leave the devil bars when you have a shallow beam and you don't you are not getting the required development length without anchoring into the column now the next figure explains that bending your bar more than a couple of times is not beneficial because code doesn't allow you to take more than 16 times diameter as the benefit so first bend gave you eight times the second bend gave you another eight times so 16 times already so the third leg c the leg c here is not really effective as per the code so that is something that you need to understand as well now this is the most important point i want you to understand many times especially if you are a site engineer you might have ended up in a situation where the drawing showed you an anchorage length of say 768 and unfortunately the site could do only 600 due to some reason they didn't do it proper you have only 600 millimeter 168 millimeter shortage now what do you do about this the first thing that you could do is actually calculate the requirement many round off would have been done and 768 the drawing would have shown as 800 which means already you have extra dimension which is shown in the drawing so you may not need 800 at all second thing you have to see and if you are knowing the situation and the way to calculate that the most important thing that you need to understand is you are taking full capacity of your rebar to decide this development length that is 0.87 times fy is your rebar really stressed to its fullest not really one thing is you have a factor of safety of 1.5 but let us not eat from that let us not take from that yeah even then many times the structural engineer would have rounded off the reinforcement requirements say for example the ast required is 320 you cannot give 320 uh, steel exactly probably he might have given two number of 16 diameter which means the steel is 400 millimeter square the required steel is 300 and say 12 millimeter square and you have provided 400 millimeter square which means it is not fully stressed your stress in the rebar is not 415 because you have a margin there 
it is less stressed so you can work out that based on what is required and what is provided and proportionately reduce the stress in your rebar which means your sigma s is lesser than actual for one five because you have more steel more steel means less stress in your rebars so your development length automatically comes down so you may not have to remove your rebars and redo it if it's a very minor shortage so you need to see if you have given more steel so now if you are a site engineer you may not have control on design but if someone tells you to completely redo your detailing at site you can always ask him to check this particular information and if you know to check this nothing like that that will add value to your site now many have asked me okay how do you anchor bars in compression what are the rules for that so you can have a look at this particular figure in sp34 which will allow you to understand what are the requirement for anchoring of bars in compression i hope this video helped you to understand what is anchorage what is the requirement and how you can work around in case if you have a very slight shortage in anchorage length now in case if you are wanting to read this in full you can always go to civilera.com and hit on the blog and read this particular information in full we also have a lot of other blogs in our site and i recommend you read this particular one which is on moment redistribution which is extremely useful for engineers thank you for your time we will see you soon on another video